Hello, everybody. We got a pastor's appreciate card today, and we sure do appreciate it. And this is the true friends are a blessing. Got one of those, and then we got a card. This is a special prayer for your pastor. Today's Pastor Appreciation Day. Jesus is your good shepherd. He may refresh you in green pastures often. Jesus is your faithful friend. May he walk beside you in you daily. Jesus is your blessing savior. May he keep you secure in his hands. Amen. And uh, is love you in Christ Jesus, Regina. All things that are at times may be his light or something else. Uh, remind me of his ways. Amen. That's Really nice. Thank you so much. Pastor Appreciation Day. Amen. A lot of you call me Pastor Mike. I even have, I even have other pastors call me Pastor Mike. If you live long enough, blessing increases even to help other pastors. And I appreciate it. Glad that God can do what he needs to do through us. And... Uh, Get the job done. Amen. Well, Father, thank you for your word. An extra special blessing on everybody today. It does pastor appreciation. And uh, we greatly appreciate it. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about God. Is there anything too hard for God? Well, no. But we have to flow with him. If you're going the opposite direction of God, uh, then guess what? You ain't going to be flowing with him. He's nothing's impossible to him, but you have to flow with him. Amen. If you got a Bible, open it up to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right before the book of, and it's going to be John 14, 14. If you have a Bible, I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Not paraphrased, but translation today. 1414. And it says, Yes. There you go. We can all just go home now. <laughs> That's the answer to your prayer is yes. You don't have to pray now, Lord, if it's, is it your will? You know, you don't have to pray that. Why? Because he already said yes. He says, yes, ask me anything in my name and I'll do it. Now, what happens is, is people get a misnomer because they think they're trying to make the Bible say something it don't say. So let's read this in context. What does it say? To, to your, when you're talking to Jesus, talking to God, and you've got your faith on something, and maybe it looked like it had been a long time coming, if you don't watch it, you'll start talking, well, I guess it wasn't God's will. I started believing him back in 1941, and here it is, 2023, and I ain't seen it yet. And then you'll drop the ball of faith and then you'll be like, well, what's going on? What's going on is you didn't do this scripture. You have to settle it once and for all. It's yours. Yes. He didn't say maybe. And then he put some stipulations in there. What do you have to do? You have to direct your faith to who? God, the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. 
So who are you praying to? Who are you saying to? It says to me. So before you even ask, the answer is yes. Well, why are you asking then to direct your faith and whatever it is that you put your faith on? And who are you talking to? Jesus. Just ask of me for anything. Well, I'm praying now, Lord, if it's your will, that's not what the Bible says. That's why you have misnomers. That's why you miss it. No, yes, ask me for anything. Some versions of where it says thing is things, plural. Now, how do you ask him? In my name. See? In my name. Just like the power of attorney. The power of attorney is just like if you give someone the power of attorney and they go to the bank, they can take all the money out of the bank. They can go live in your home. They can sell your home. <laughs> they can take your cars. They can do whatever they want to. I tell people all the time, don't do it. <laughs> and uh, so, but that's the same thing. But with God, it's okay. Because in my name, and he gave me the power of attorney in his name to save, heal, save, set free, delivered, and financially blessed in his name. You see that? And then it says, what's he going to do? He's going he's gonna to think about it. He's going to see if you earned it. He's going to see if you're good enough. No, you're not. None of that's based on you. All of it's based on yes. Ask in my name or anything in my name, he'll do it. Now you got to understand something. When's he going to do it? He's going to do it when you decide it's yes. He's going to do it when you ask him. He's going to do it when it's anything in his name. So when's he going to do it? When you get them all lined up. If you don't have them lined up, he can't do it. I'll do it. So that would be like the congregational people said, now. Of course, they've been taught that way. Now is faith. So when is it now? The second that you say yes, ask anything, my name, I'll do it. Went right then. When you get those things lined up, right then is right then. That's when he does it, right then. So before you can wear it, drive it, smell it, taste it, live in it, whatever it is, one of the ministry homes we're working on, they had some breaks in there. Uh, I mean, it looks like sometimes it's just not going to get done. Or the church, you know, looks like it's not going to. We don't go by that. We go by what this says. We just say, no, nothing's broken. Nothing's missing. Everything's spotless and clean. God's going to find somebody to work. God's going to some, find somebody that obeys him. In finances, might as well be you because then the blessing will increase on you. If not, there's no hope for you. But if when you obey him in finances concerning this ministry, the work of God, I mean, this is the work of God. You take what he's given you, put some in the work of God, pay your bills and save some. When you do those three things and then you do this scripture before all that so the money can come, but you got to do with it what the Lord says to do. Amen. And he is faithful. He's, you know, he's faithful even if you're unfaithful. You just can't get it to work right. So you might as well be faithful on yes, already before you even prayed, it's yes. Ask me anything. Who are you asking? Jesus. It's in red there. For anything, no matter what it is, some versions say things, plural more than one. In my name, it's done. Some versions even say it's done. When? The second you ask. Why? Because you ask, before you ask with the inclination there, it's already done because they already said yes. 
Before you even prayed, he already said yes, according to the scriptures. You see that? Isn't that good? So before you even ask him today, if people listen to this and uh, give you a little update, we hit over 41,000 this morning. That's where you shout amen. Amen. <laughs> we hit over 41,000 uh, people watching the videos. Over 41,000. And so it just keeps growing. The ministry just keeps growing and reaching more people. Uh, be in agreement with us. We've got 12 books. We've already got them written. We need to get them out where people can read those too. They can carry them around with them. They're devotional books or teaching books. They're books that you they're made to carry with your Bible. And uh, you read them every day. They're written in paragraphs, sentences and paragraphs. So uh, I didn't intend to do that. I just thought I was just going to write another book. And the Lord said, no, write it in sentences and paragraphs and number them. That way they can remember, just like texts in the Bible, they can remember what they're meditating on that day. And what you meditate on or what you say is what you're going to say. If you're watching a bunch of hoopla junk all the time, and that's what you're going to be thinking about, and that's what you're going to be getting in your own life is hoopla junk. If you watch programs of families busting up all the time, guess what? So you got to quit that and start meditating on God and, and His restoring power, and then start talking just like this. Don't say nothing else. That's in John 14, 14. And tonight, when we come back, we're going to even clarify it even, even clearer. See, because if you really believe it's God's will for you to have that, whatever it is, then it's easy to believe. But if you don't know what the Bible says, you're doing something else than in John 14, 14, then... You're going to be wishy washy up and down sideways and everything else and blame God because you think it didn't happen. He don't want you to have it. Oh, I'm satisfied. He don't want me to have it. So, Well, if you act like that, you're, you're actually opposed to God. You don't want to be like that. Amen. Give your life to Jesus today and new and afresh. Just say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you and new and afresh. I thank you, Lord. And in Romans... 10, 9, I confess you as Lord. That's what you say. I confess you as Lord. Believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and therefore I'm saved. That's how you pray that prayer. The simplest form, just like this one, the simplest form. And then uh, fill me with the Holy Spirit. It don't matter what you've been taught, throw it out. Just receive the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. And Acts 19 Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? They said, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. He said, we'll receive him now. He taught him a more excellent way, which was uh, Acts 19. They got born again. They was, they was John's servants and following him. They didn't know the Messiah even came. They were living out in the backwoods somewhere out in the wilderness. And they came to town one day and boom, they got born again. He was already serving, trying to serve Jesus through Paul, through John, but he could just take him so far, you know, because he's not the Savior. So he showed and told him the gospel. Jesus was born by a virgin supernaturally. God put himself in Mary. He was born, lived on the earth 33 and a half years. And uh, he was crucified for our in our place. We should have been crucified and tortured and and uh and killed for our sins, died in our sins, but Jesus rescued us. He became our savior from our horrible devil's pit. And three days later, he got physically raised from the dead, not, not just spiritually, but physically raised from the dead. And his, he did not decay. His blood did not decay. His, his, his blood and everything came back to him. And it was great. I know there's people that try to say that, uh, Jesus sacrificed everything, but he still had his blood in him. And no, that's against scripture. The Bible says that he, his shedding of his blood is a cleansing of our sins. So what he did. So they said, well, how did he get physically raised from the dead then with no blood? 
Well, how do you get physically, people get physically raised from the dead, even has blood? It's all supernatural. See how goofy people try to twist it up. And the devil wants you to not believe one of those steps. And that way you can't get born again. The gospel simple, those seven steps. He got physically raised from the dead. He's now lowered. Number six, and coming again. You believe all those things? Well, then Jesus, when you say, Jesus, you're my Lord, you're saying, Jesus, I believe all those steps there, and I give my life to you. So be filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 19. Uh, and you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You're, when you, once you get born again, you're a candidate, you're a person of believing of Jesus and confessing him as Lord. Now he's your Lord and Savior. And now you can receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit don't make the Holy Spirit comes after salvation. He comes and lives in you, but you're born of the Spirit when you get born again. But now you can be filled with the Spirit to the overflowing of speaking in tongues. So just receive him now and just start speaking. Show rumble that's all by faith. Show No, don't sit there with your mouth shut. He ain't gonna take your tongue and make you talk. No, you gotta do talking. In Jesus' name, be blessed today and be healed. Isaiah 53, 5 says, By stripes you're healed. What are you saying? What are you saying? Well, I'm saying I wish he would heal me someday. That ain't in the Bible. No, you receive healing just like you receive Jesus. You receive the Holy Spirit, evidence speaking in tongues. And then you put action to your faith. Uh, that not he can heal you, that you are the healed. You're just saying what the Bible says. Amen. So be at peace today. Be at rest today. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, come back tonight at 6 o'clock because we're going to take this verse even further and show you what the Bible says about God's will. And he's just going to point blank. There's people in the Bible that ask God, if it's your will, could you do this or that? And he's just going to tell them straight up what his will is. So come back tonight. You'll enjoy it. And we'll see you tonight. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless.